All right, so let's start a new Pro Tools session. I put all my applications in the dock of my computer, but you'll find Pro Tools in the application folder if you haven't put it into your dock. So I'm just going to launch Pro Tools. Now I have about a million plugins, so it was going to take about an hour to load. Well, only kidding, but uh, I'll spare you the loading bar for the next minute or something while uh, it loads up all of my plugins. You'll see it loading whatever plugins you have there, and we'll cut to the chase. You can see I'm using the ultimate version of Pro Tools. Uh, you might be using just the standard Pro Tools. When you launch Pro Tools, uh, it comes up with something called the dashboard. This is where you actually create a new session. Before you do anything, you have to understand what's going on in this dashboard because this is where you tell Pro Tools, you know, the sample rate and the bit depth of the session because you get to choose that at this point. And also you name the session and then really importantly, you tell Pro Tools where you want to store this session on your hard drive, either locally or on some kind of external drive that you might have. Let's give it a name. Quarantine. Can I spell that? No. Quarantine. And it's going to be on local storage. Uh, you can use cloud functions. Uh, if you're using Pro Tools first, you can only use cloud. But for other versions of Pro Tools, you can store it wherever you like. But I'm going to store it locally. Now, this next part's really important. So this is where you tell it the, the audio file type that you want Pro Tools to use. And I would recommend that it's set to BWF, WAV and not AIFF. WAVs are just like super compatible across every single platform you can think of. So just leave it set to WAV. Now sampling rate, I like to work at 48 kilohertz. It's a good sample rate because, you know, when you're working at home and you haven't got the most mega powerful computer in the entire universe, you can actually run really substantial sessions at 48K. And also it sounds pretty good. So it will give you a pile of options. You can go right up to 192 kilohertz, but I record at 48.24 most of the time. I just finished an album on 48.24 and you know, it sounds fine. Bit depth, this is really important. Set it to 24 bit. 48.24 is just a, a really good compromise between really excellent recording quality, but also a manageable file size. And also it won't kill your computer because when you ramp up the sample frequency and the bit depth together, it puts a lot more strain on your computer. So you can't run as much stuff when you're running at the high sample frequency. So I always recommend everyone works at 48.24 for now, unless you're a super user. And then interleaved file format. So have that checked. That just means when you record in stereo, it creates one file with both of the channels in it rather than two files, one for the left and one for the right. I just find that messy. So I just use interleaved file format. And then location, really important. You have to know where you're saving your stuff. I can't tell you how many people just lose their stuff when they're learning Pro Tools. So just tell it where you want it to go. At the moment, you can see I've got it pointed towards my desktop. So it's just going to save straight to my desktop right here and it'll create a folder called quarantine. And we'll look at the file structure of Pro Tools a bit later. So create. Okay, you will see over here that did create a folder on my desktop called quarantine. When you open Pro Tools and you create a new session, you see absolutely nothing except the menu bar and the transport and a whole lot of tools controls. You don't see any audio tracks. That's because by default, when you open a Pro Tools session, it just gives you a blank slate and you tell it to add audio tracks. So I am just going to add one audio track while we're here, just so we've got something to look at. So I go up to the file menu and I go track and I go new brings up this new tracks dialog box. I could create 20 new tracks here if I just typed in 20. I'm just gonna create one for now. You can choose a lot of different track formats. It's a pro application, so it does everything from mono to stereo to left, center, right, you know, to all these different surround formats right up to the high end. If I was doing a Hollywood feature film, I'd be able to create like a 7.1.2 audio track. But you know, I just wanna record a mic into Pro Tools, so it's just gonna be a single input source so it's going to be mono likewise you have to tell it what kind of track you are making uh, you've got a bunch of options there audio track is what you want to record audio i'm not going to go through the other ones at this moment but you know you can create midi tracks and instrument tracks if you want to we're just going to create an audio track leave that set to samples i'm just going to call this uh, let's just say voice and just hit create and when i do that it creates an audio track. Now we're looking at something called the edit window. 
which is basically like a timeline view of the audio. And when we actually record into Pro Tools, we'll see an audio waveform stretching from left to right. So this left to right axis represents time. So this is the edit window. And we work in here when we're editing and we're playing back. We can do a lot from this window. And when we actually start mixing, we actually go over to the mix window. So there is a window control. I never use it because I use the keyboard shortcut. But FYI, if you go to window, you'll see you can click over to mix window. And there's my huge mixer with one channel in it. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so as I add channels or as I add tracks to the edit window, then my channels will appear on the mixer. And this is where we can operate this page, the mix page, like an audio mixer. But we're essentially building the house, you know, here by adding tracks. And then uh, as we add tracks, so let me maybe add another, you know, three tracks. So I have four tracks, so I'm going to create three tracks and I'm going to call them another track. So it's going to create three tracks now, another track one, two and three. Okay, so if I now flick across back to the mix window, this is the last time I'm going to do this, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut after this, which is actually command equals on your keyboard. Let me just do that now, command equal. Okay, that's what anyone but a first day Pro Tools user does when they want to change between the mix and the edit window. But you can see here that now that I've created three more tracks, I now have four audio channels in my mixer. Okay, so we won't look at that for the moment. So let's have a bit of a look around Pro Tools now that we've created some tracks. Okay, so you have the transport bar up here, which is basically where you put Pro Tools into, uh, let's put it into play, for example, and you can see uh, the time uh, ticking over there and you can see uh, Pro Tools is now playing along that timeline. We've got nothing in it so it's not terribly interesting to listen to. A uh, bit of silence, a bit of John Cage. And then when we actually start recording we will be using the record button and the play button and those of you that are old like me you will remember cassette decks when you needed to put them into record you had to first hit the uh, record button and then hit the play button and then up here you've got the timeline ruler and then you can see that you can look at time in lots of different ways so if we're working in musical time we've got bars and beats if we're working in clock time we've got minutes and seconds and then when we have bars and beats and tempo based material we can actually see tempo changes if we've got them along here at the moment I'm set to 120 beats per minute and then we can also place markers in our audio so if I'm working on a song and I want to mark out the first verse and the second verse and then the chorus and then the bridge and then the middle eight and all of these sorts of things then I can actually place markers into that timeline give them names and then I can jump to them with key commands so I can jump around the song quite easily but essentially that ruler, it gives you a heap of different options. The ones that I just tend to use are these ones, but there are a bazillion of them. You can look at time code if you're working in film and television. You can look at a bunch of stuff under here. But 99.9% .9 of the time, I find bars and beats, minutes and seconds, tempo and markers to do everything I need it to do. So that's how you make Pro Tools go into play or record. There is a keyboard shortcut, which of course everyone uses after their first hour of using Pro Tools, which is you hit the space bar. So if I hit the space bar, then I will put it into play, hit the space bar again, and it will stop. You know, and if I hit the return key, it'll go back to zero. When I hit the return key, it just took me back to the beginning of the track. So transport control is pretty straightforward. Then we have a bunch of editing tools, which I will look at once we actually have some audio in this session. Okay, to get audio in and out of Pro Tools, obviously you need to have a audio interface plugged in. So everyone's going to have something a little bit different in that regard. And every single audio interface is going to have a different number of inputs and outputs. And so Pro Tools will essentially adapt to whatever interface you have connected. So maybe this is a good time to have a look at the setup window. So the first thing is the playback engine. So the playback engine is what kind of audio engine Pro Tools is using. For example, you might just want to use the built-in sound of the computer. So you might have an audio interface connected, but for whatever reason, I can't think of a reason why, you might just want to be using the built-in sound on your computer. But I am using an interface called the Apogee Quartet. And because that's been installed correctly, my Mac sees it as an audio device. And so if I click on this playback engine, 
You'll see I have a bunch of complicated stuff set up on my machine. Yours will not look anywhere near as complicated. But you'll see a bunch of different options. You'll see built-in output is one of those options, as I just described earlier. But I don't want to use the mini jack on my machine. I want to use this nice, sexy interface that I have that's got great microphone preamps in it. So I'm going to use the Quartet. Okay, so I'm not going to um, change it, so I don't need to save and reload it. But after you've set up your audio interface, one of the first things you need to do is to go into this playback engine and make sure the Pro Tools is pointing to that interface. Whatever the name of your interface is, if it's been installed correctly, it will appear in this playback engine dialog box. So I'm set to quartet, I'm good to go. Then you have a bunch of other options. This hardware buffer size thing, I won't talk about in detail now. There's a little buffer of samples that sits in memory between the input and the output of the computer. When you run your computer hard, you tend to need to have a higher buffer or the machine craps out. But when you're recording, you want this hardware buffer size down very low because ultimately this governs what's called the latency. So that's the delay between the time that your audio from your interface hits Pro Tools and comes back the other side into your headphones. So high buffer settings involve a lot more latency and how much latency you can deal with through headphones while you're playing, it's different for every player. But if I was to turn this above 128 samples, I would get extremely annoyed about the delay that I was hearing in my headphones between the time that I was singing or playing or whatever and what I was hearing back in my headphones. So just leave it at 128 samples for now. If I click on it, you can see it goes right up to 1024 or down as low as 32. You need a pretty spanking fast computer to be able to work at 32 and not have Pro Tools complain at you. But you'll get very little latency. What's coming back in your headphones is going to sound absolutely immediate at 32 samples. These are the ones, keep dynamic plug-in processing on. I'm not going to explain that now. The last thing I did was with video. Um, and if you're not using video, take video engine off. So Pro Tools can run video. So if I was doing something to picture, like a soundtrack or a score or, um, or doing some sound design for picture, then obviously I want to be running a video on a second monitor or in the corner of my screen as a reference. So whack it off if you're not using it because it just uses computer resources. Disc playback, just leave that to the default what it's set. When it comes time to change that, you'll be so deeply into Pro Tools, it will be a very simple explanation. So just hit OK. So that's set up the playback engine, so it's looking at my quartet which actually has quite a few ins and outs. So uh, after you've set your playback engine, you can go to your I.O. setup, which gives you the inputs and outputs on your device. So if you're using a simple two in, two out interface, you're only going to see two inputs, one and two here, and outputs one and two as well. Uh, but because I'm using my Apogee Quartet, that has four microphone inputs or analog inputs, and it has eight digital inputs, eight at inputs. So you're seeing all of those lined up there because I've set to quartet. And on the output side of things, likewise, it has eight outputs. So that's going to look a little bit different depending on what audio interface you're using. And I'm not going to go into this page in detail at this point other than to let you know that it's here. Okay, and this is where you can see all of the inputs and outputs. If you've got multiple ones on your interface, then you're going to see them there. And that relates to the next thing that I'm going to show you. So once we have an audio channel, then we need to set the input and the output of that. So if I'm going to record onto this thing, I need to tell Pro Tools, all right, where am I taking my audio source from to record on? And so if you see this IO tab here, it's the audio input path selector. If I click on that and pop it down, you'll see there's all my Apogee audio interface inputs of which I just said earlier, there are four analog inputs and there are eight digital inputs, all right? So, you know, I've got my mic plugged into uh, number one now. So now that I'm plugged into number one, this voice will be looking at input number one, which should be my voiceover mic. You're not seeing anything yet. I will explain that in a minute. Likewise, each channel or each track in your edit window has a output path selector. So where do you want to send this track to when you've got audio on it? Well, 99.9% .9 of the time you want to send it just to the main outputs of your interface, okay, which is usually the first two. Uh, you'll see all these fancy other things that I've got set up there. Forget about those. On your interface, you're just going to have probably two outputs if you're using a two in and out. So you've just got to set the output of the track to look at your main outputs or outputs one and two. That's done. 
in order to see signal going in to this now, so obviously I'm not seeing any level, but my microphone is connected and it is sending signal to Pro Tools, we need to actually put Pro Tools either in Record Enable, so let me put something in now. So now that I'm in Record Enable, you can now see me metering through Pro Tools, right? So that's the sound of my voice as I'm talking to you. Um, so essentially you don't see any of the input that's arriving at a track until you have record enabled that. There is another option to having it in record enable and that is clicking this I button which stands for track input monitor. So if I click on that I also see myself but if I was to go into record now it wouldn't actually record anything it's just looking at the input to the track without actually recording it. So if I wanted to do a test recording, record enable the track and then set my levels. Now you can't set levels in Pro Tools. You can set playback levels, but you can't set your record levels in Pro Tools. So if I'm recording in Pro Tools from my interface, then my interface is going to have a microphone preamplifier on it. And so that will have a gain control on it where I can turn my mic up or down. So in terms of setting recording levels in Pro Tools, you have to do that from your external hardware, from your external audio interface, okay? And you wanna get it kind of bubbling up about two thirds of the way up the computer on the highest peaks. So what I'm doing there, the peaks, yep. And I'm not blowing that out. Uh, if that light goes red, you're giving it too much level, you're clipping. So that level's looking pretty good at the moment to me. I'll give you a peek at my audio interface. Some of them come with a bit of software, uh, mine does. Uh, some of them don't. But you can see here, mic one, that's my input, and 51, that's my level control. Okay, so I've set my microphone input to apply 51 decibels of gain on my interface. So that's just a by the by. Some interfaces come with a bit of software like this where you can actually set it not only from the hardware but also by a, a software on screen control. So that's me. Uh, let's get on with it. Let's record something. Okay, so in order to record, you need to record enable. This is like holding down the record button on a cassette deck before you hit play. Okay, so to record in Pro Tools, you need to click this record enable button in the transport bar. So notice I've clicked the record enable button in the track, but I also have clicked the record enable button in the transport bar. And then when I've done that, here we are and uh, I'm recording. So I'll just speak for a little while just to uh, put some audio down on this track. Isn't it a nice day? Are we having a good time? Is this a reasonable tutorial or are you bored yet? Okay, let's just keep it there and stop. Okay, so I just hit the stop button on the transport bar if I wanted to, if I wanted to be a real pro, I could have just hit the space bar instead of using the on-screen control. But you know, given that this is your first time looking around Pro Tools, then clicking the on-screen controls and showing you the menus is far less confusing than if you're just hearing click, click, click on keyboards and not seeing anything, right? Okay, so if I want to play that back, I'll just take it out of record enable here, pop it off. So now obviously my voice disappears and then we'll just play. Here we are and uh, I'm recording. So I'll just speak for a little while just to uh, put some audio down on this track. Isn't it a nice day? Are we having a good time? Beautiful. Okay, so that's just playing back the audio from the track and the reason that we heard that is because it's going to the main output control. So it's set to the correct output. So now it's probably time to look at the different tools and the different modes that Pro Tools can be in. So while I'm working in the timeline like this, I've got a, now got something called an audio clip and it's called Voice01. So it's the first recording that I've made on the voice channel. And so it's auto named it Voice01. When I make another recording, uh, it'll be called Voice02 and so on. So I can move stuff around on the timeline. Okay, so let's look at the behavior of Pro Tools in terms of how audio can be moved around against the timeline in various ways. So 
uh, up on the top left hand side of the screen in the top left hand corner it'll default to something called slip okay and that allows you to freely slip this audio around in time on the timeline so let's just try slipping this around now that brings me to these next set of tools which give you the ability the hand tool is just where you want to grab a bit of audio it's called the grabber tool and move it around in time so let's just take it one step at a time so i'm in slip mode with the grabber tool and then let me just zoom in um, i'm going to use the uh, the keyboard shortcut which is r and t so t zooms you in okay but you can use these uh, controls here okay the left right arrow keys all right so i've got the grabber tool a hand self-explanatory and i'm in slip mode i'll just click on this and drag it okay now i'm just moving that around in the timeline okay and it's free i can move it really small increments as small as i like i can zoom right in um, where's my key yeah and you know like do really micro movements all right and zoom back out it's my r key i'll do it for you for the beginners okay so those left and right arrow keys up there give you the ability to zoom in and out on the time axis this sort of waveform looking one here gives you the ability to zoom the amplitude up or down it's just a view it doesn't change the audio level but when you're editing really detailed stuff that's very soft and very low level sometimes you need to pump up that vertical axis so that you can see the waveform properly so that is slip mode okay and then you have grid mode so if we are working in pro tools where we're using a musical grid like bars and beats then you will see that pro tools has a mode for this so i'm just going to zoom in so you can see bar one bar two bar three okay and if i use the grab a tool on this and i move in grid mode what it does is it snaps to the grid so this grid is a musical value okay so these are bar numbers two three four and then you see these internal grid lines at the moment they're quarter notes or as the english say crotchets i'm just use the american thing these days although well, i was a kid i was as a music student i was you know really brought up on the british system crotchets so quarter notes all right so you can change the grid value above here when you see grid click on that quarter note so if i want to change it to 16th notes quite a finer grid look at all these lines that appear okay so when i'm now in grid mode it's just going to slip me by these fine increments okay which is a 16th note or as the british would say a semiquaver so you can work in pro tools on the timeline in terms of musical values and musical grids or you can forget about that grid and just take it off and put it back on slip and just move it freely in time I'm going to leave the other ones which is shuffle and spot spots just used for audio post-production for film and you can type in time code points and stuff we don't want to go there uh, shuffles and other behavior that just stay away from it from now just concentrate on slip and grid and then we saw the grabber tool and we've got this next tool which is the selector tool so if i just want to select bits of audio so you can see it turns into like an eye beam and i just click and drag with my mouse I can just select bits of audio okay so if I wanted to delete just this garbage at the front before me talking I could just select that and then just hit the delete key bingo it's gone okay and then zoom in I'll do it one more time for you using this key although I'm going to use the T key soon and then I can trim it down even tighter we can go all the way in here just take off little bits of it okay but you get the vibe okay so this is the selector tool and it allows you just to select bits of audio by clicking and dragging okay for editing purposes okay i'll grab a tool back and go back to the beginning all right and then there is something called the trimmer tool so when you have an audio clip like this thing in the timeline i'll just move it out a bit so it's a bit easier to see okay if i take the trimmer tool this is just basically trimming the beginning and end of an audio clip 
so it goes into like a bracket there you go you can see it contrast against here then if I click and drag it's just changing the length of this audio clip it's doing nothing at the back if you're a video editor you'll know what these things are and same thing here okay it's just trimming down that clip so I just want it to be that and that behavior also works when you are in grid mode so let me go back to grid mode I'm going to turn it to uh, you know like a coordinate again all of these tools will work either in slip or grid mode when you use grid mode then whatever tool you're using like for example the uh, trimmer tool it will trim against the grid right it won't trim freely in between it just snaps me on that trim to the grid I mean, when you're working with music, which is kind of what we're doing, then unless you're making drone music or ambient music, you're probably going to be working against some kind of metrical grid, you know, a musical grid, bars and beats. So when you're working on music, you tend to work in this mode all the time. But if I was working as a sound designer in film and television, then uh, I would never be working in this mode. So Pro Tools is highly evolved for different kinds of practices, including music production, but also it's the standard platform for audio post-production in film and television as well. So you've got as many people using this tool to, to track lay films and television as you do uh, making music on it. It does both. Okay, so hopefully that has described the behaviour, the grid and the slip behaviour and then also the main tools of the grabber tool, the selector tool and the trimmer tool. And then we had a bit of a look at changing the grid value over here between quarter note and sixteenth note is what we changed it between. And then we also looked at the basic transport controls to start and stop Pro Tools but also to record and enable it. And then when we record and enabled our voice track and we had it set to input one which is our mic then I was able to record myself okay like that 